Our current salutatorians average of 98.07% would normally earn the top spot academically in a graduating class. Unfortunately, Christian was always nipping at her heels the whole time. And then Jinsol ran into the grade breaker, known as Mr. Campanella in BC Calculus. I'm sorry, Jinsol. I really feel awful about that. I had no idea <laughs> that it would affect that. Well, we also know what type of opportunist Christian is. So he just couldn't take help but just rip that top spot away from her. <laughs> But seriously, I've known Christian since he first joined the student government during his freshman year. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with him, both in and out of the classroom, and obviously in the classroom he is a top-notch student. He has also been a tremendous asset to our school, and has definitely made my life easier as the COSA and also now as the senior advisor. It is with the utmost pleasure that I introduce to you the Queen's High School for the Sciences valedictorian of the class of 2015, with a cumulative average as the limit as n approaches infinity of, oh, I'm sorry, with a cumulative average of 98.72 percent. So naturally, I did the one thing all of us do when we have homework questions that we're too lazy to answer. I googled it. <laughs> WikiHow told me in eight easy steps that I should tell a story. Thank people who are influential in all of our lives. Avoid cliches. Talk about stuff your class cares about. You know, the vague useless stuff that doesn't help you answer your question. So naturally, I went to the next website, and the next, and the next. But I didn't go to the second page of the search results, because really, if you're going that far, you're not going to find your answer. Expecting to find the answer on the second page is like watching Game of Thrones, and, and not expecting to not have someone spoil it for you. Spoiler alert, everybody dies. <laughs> anyway, I still had no ideas, so I did what we all do when we get stuck. I went on Facebook, checked Snapchat and Instagram, Changed my Spotify album, you know, procrastinate, because I was definitely going to find the inspiration for my speech by reading TBHs or looking at pictures of food. <laughs> then I had my epiphany. Google, spoilers, Facebook. There's one thing that definitively affects all of us. That ethereal nebulous web that we can all relate to whether we like to or not. The internet. The internet has defined this age that we live in, the digital age. This is the age where we can share pictures of our graduation with family members halfway around the world. This is the age where the world's questions can be answered by pulling your phone out of your pocket. <coughs> this is the age where people do the silliest things for the gram, like taking a selfie during a graduation speech. <laughs> We watch Facebook defeat MySpace. We live through the decline of AIM. We are in the middle of bringing about the end of television as we stream our shows. Yes, the internet has grown up with us just as much as we have, and it will continue to grow with us. And much like the internet, we are constantly changing. If you need proof, just check your Facebook timeline from four years ago. <laughs> and for those of us that made Facebooks in middle school, or as I call it, the dark ages, no further proof is needed. God knows how many knuckleball wars you know who you are. I've watched play out on Facebook. You look back and think, I wrote that? The truth is, we really don't remember much of our past. Here's a thought exercise. 
What did you eat for dinner yesterday? The day before? A week ago? Think of how many of the little things we gloss over in our lives. Our brains can't remember everything, which isn't a bad thing, but we forget the little details, the inconsequential things at first, and then the big things. Do you remember what you did for your eighth birthday? Or that middle school best friend you said you would be friends with forever, but barely see, let alone talk to anymore? <laughs> of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. Some of us will pass through a sieve of circumstantial friendship intact, but many of us will not. And just like that middle school friend, we will forget each other. It may take months, even years, but the memories we forge here will eventually fade away into obscurity. It's sad, definitely. We have about five minutes left, and then we get our diplomas, and then we'll be passing through that sieve again. Some of us are ready to peace out and never talk to any of us. Others might get sentimental, and some of us might even hang out later this week. But a pivotal difference between middle school and high school is that we'll always have the internet to connect us, even when we're miles, continents apart. Sure, we had social media in middle school, but its interconnectivity has only grown exponentially since then. In 10 years, I'm excited to watch from my computer as you all post about conquering Wall Street, entering government, making movies, building the robots of tomorrow, saving lives, and arguing in court of law. And for those of you that don't pursue these paths, I'm still excited because every single one of you will make history in some way. Because history can be as significant as changing the course of humanity or as subtle as changing the course of a human life. And if you're asking, whose life have I changed? Then all you need to do is look around you because these are the people whose lives you've changed. I can't count how many times you all have made me laugh and smile when life was terrible. And I would be remiss to not mention our parents, whose lives have also been changed forever, and who have supported us from day one. I love you, Mom and Dad. Woo! Woo! Sentimentality aside, I can definitively say that all of you have changed my life in some way, and for that, I thank you. This, I feel, is the definitive QHSS experience. We're all one big family, something very few high schools can say. And just like family on Facebook, we can all annoy each other to death. Breaking the printer back when we still had it, or asking someone to print your homework was the equivalent of asking for lives on Candy Crush. And we spread rumors as fast as we argued over the color of a dress, which is black and blue, by the way, and I will find you over that. <laughs> Getting back our test was, and I'm definitely guilty of this, the hashtag humble brag. But like family, we look past our differences. Because at the end of the day, the only person who can understand the stresses and tortures of a QHSS student are another QHSS student. Unless those people are the torturers themselves. And plus, do we have some great torture <coughs> teachers. <laughs> corresponding parts of congruent triangles, oh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, still scars me from geometry. The words focus and motivation make me want to run for the hills. We struggled through insane geography quizzes in history. We were trolled daily in calculus, and we accepted that there were other elements besides earth, wind, fire, and air. We weren't even safe outside of the classroom. I'll never forget the fear in people's eyes when they saw a hallway quiz coming. Yes, those exist for our guests with us here today. Or how frustrated people were to look for to or how frustrated people were to look through a book for references to dust. The actual references were found on QHSS floors. <laughs> but, seriously, but seriously, we have such an eclectic group of teachers that very few high schools could hope to have. These people have played an integral part in our high school life. They were our counselors, our friends, and without doubt, a part of our family that we will miss dearly when we leave. No amount of words could possibly express the gratitude we have for all of you. But thank you so, so much for everything that you do. Expect a friend request to start pouring in in about three minutes. <laughs> Before I finish, it would be blasphemy to talk about the internet and not talk about cats. There's one cat in particular that I would like to talk about, Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat was a thought experiment made up by Erwin Schrodinger to explain the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum superposition. <coughs> Quantum superposition is the idea that a quantum particle can be in two states at the same time. For you AP physics kids, this would be the wave particle duality of subatomic particles. The Copenhagen interpretation, which Schrodinger thought was wrong, says that a particle is in both states until you observe it. Then, the universe is forced to make a decision and show the particle being in one state, even though it showed properties of being in two states just before. 
For those of you still confused, there will be tutoring right after graduation. <laughs> so how does this relate to cats? Suppose you have an indestructible box that has a cat inside of it and some radioactive matter. This matter has a 50% chance of decaying. If it decays, then the cat dies. If the, cat, if the matter doesn't decay, then the cat lives. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, the cat is dead and alive at the same time until you open the box. Then the universe is forced to make a decision. When you open the box, the cat will either be dead or alive. If this sounds silly, then good, because it should. This was Schrodinger's way of calling the Copenhagen interpretation ridiculous. In other words, this was how physicists insulted each other circa 1935. But the idea behind it teaches us a very important lesson. Throughout our lives, we will face countless situations where things can turn out good or bad. Thus, the situation can be thought of as good and bad at the same time. It is only by opening the box that we figure out which it is. And regardless of whether we get a live cat or a dead cat, life's joy is found in those moments of opening the box. So take the uncertainty of situations in stride. Life is too short to not. Unless you're watching Game of Thrones, then there is no uncertainty. The cat will always be dead. <laughs> We're nearing the end of our 10 minutes together, so allow me to leave you with a quote from Joe Plumeri, who was vice chairman for one of the largest insurance brokers in America. He said, you can Google for an answer, you can Google for a fame, you can Google for a career, but you can't Google to find what's in your heart, the passion that lifts you skyward. He is right, there is no Google search for finding that intrinsic drive that lets us tackle our day every day. The next four years of our lives will be our own personal Google search, It'll be like Googling what makes me happy, but with search results that won't be found on the internet. Instead, they'll be our experiences throughout college and life. So as we leave our high school lives behind us, let's make an effort to search for that passion that drives us towards success. Whether it is by opening boxes filled with alive dead cats, or by changing the lives of people around us. And with that, our less than half of a second has concluded. Class of 2015, it has been an honor and a pleasure to be your classmate. Let's go make history. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, for that great speech. That was fantastic. Um, but I'm not so sure that everyone dies in Game of Thrones. In fact, I just heard about them. <laughs> Although, as Ryan